Welcome back to the Taught Not Told podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Suter, and today I have a very special guest, my friend Brooks Coleman. And I'm super excited because this is one of the most organic and amazing conversations I've had in quite some time now. The other day I was on Instagram. I actually don't know exactly how I found him. Came across a profile, an ad or something. I saw some really good content. Started scrolling through and I was like, this guy's got some great content. Just dropped a little comment on his on his page and I was just like, man, you have some great content. Thanks for sharing. Sure enough, I actually didn't expect this, but I got a message back from him. We started a conversation, started sending some voice messages. And I was like, this guy knows his shit one and is in it for the right reasons. And he's helping change hundreds of lives from my perspective of what I see. And so that being said, I wanted to introduce Brooks and man, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and what kind of got you into coaching. Yeah, man. I really appreciate you having me. Glad you reached out too, because that, that was a great conversation and lots of social media can be circus level. So that, that was great. great. Refreshing for sure. But uh, yeah, a little bit about me. Grew up, kind of found the gym, like end of middle school, was going into high school, actually had delayed puberty. So started falling behind in sports, was like super embarrassed about it and tried to get bigger. Didn't work for a really long time. Ended up uh, spending like 10 years just like chasing fads, chasing all the things out there. You know, you name it, I tried it. And then finally started ended up like majoring in finance but like non-stop consuming fitness stuff at work uh, outside of work ended up leaving that job to go work in in exercise physiology lab started to learn how to read research how to got to do like actually some elderly group fitness classes which was a good time um, like resting metabolic rate tests underwater weighing all that fun stuff got to do some research and and really started to learn like the science side. So from there, I got so addicted to like optimal and I was doing everything under the sun. Finally saw like some of those results I wanted, you know, got a lot stronger, got got some abs, like whatever it was. And then kind of st started to realize like that wasn't really what I was chasing, you know, I got there and then like my, my relationships were suffering because I was just obsessed. And actually at that time was kind of like just looking for jobs that I could like continue this path of, of learning more about health and fitness. Tried out for the fire department, got hired there on, on a career fire department in Omaha, Nebraska, where I'm from. Um, and that kind of threw a wrench in being optimal, right? Cause you're, you're not getting much sleep. It just, it was a real challenge and, and I started to fall off. So, so I kind of shifted that lens from what's optimal to like, what's the best bang for my buck and started to find that balance finally with like the relationship side, the work side, not being totally consumed. And at that same time, really started to see friends falling into what I was falling into, the, the keto, the whatever it is. And that's when I was like, okay, like really started to help other people out and then saw how meaningful that was to me to like see the mental shifts that they would get. I had one close friend who throughout college ended up getting up to 300 pounds and he, uh, I helped him out like kind of from, from where I, I had, I had been and, and he lost a hundred pounds and I was like, damn, this is the coolest thing ever. All credit to him. He did, he did all the work, but, uh, that was when I was like, okay, like, can I coach people? So went and got like my precision nutrition coaching cert, got some other certs, fast forward, started coaching people. And, uh, you know, since I, since I started helping him, it's been probably four or five years, maybe more, uh, and then been coaching people primarily online since, uh, early 2022. And here we are. Heck yeah. You know, what's funny is we actually have a very similar story in a sense, man. I actually went into college as an engineering major and noticed that as much as I was studying for my classes, I was doing twice as much studying on the fitness side, listening to podcasts, constantly, very, very similar in terms of like chasing the optimal, like dialed into a to a T. I was partying quite a bit because I was a freshman in college, you know, but I definitely was so focused on the fitness and very similar as well. I had a friend that I joined the fraternity with. He was like, became my best friend. And he was uh, like 275, 280. And same thing, just kind of, he was my first ever client and just like, man, I'm going to help you out. And uh, if you just, you know, follow along with me, come work out with me kind of thing. And sure enough, he lost like 75 pounds, we became a stud. And uh, just like seeing his transformation, seeing the other people around me transforming, kind of 
got me into this like okay i'm changing my major kinesiology it's like oh it became easy because i actually like like what i'm learning this is crazy and uh yeah man that's that's so funny so after you know you kind of found your groove in fitness you kind of found you kind of took a step away from the optimal kind of started to learn more about this balance is this kind of what drove you into the coaching and saying like okay i did things wrong even maybe too extreme to an extent is that kind of what brought you into that like okay i want to help people kind of avoid this or was it more like i just want to put more of the right stuff out there yeah i think it was definitely more starting from the standpoint of like this is what we're like i'm finding things that actually work i was so caught up in these sexy stories that people throw out with fad diets and like but i but now looking back i definitely got a little tunnel vision on like this is what matters, do this. And that's all that you have to do. Um, and then like anybody that's been a coach, you know, realizes that it's not as simple as, you know, getting someone to lose a hundred pounds by just giving them the right steps. Like, you know, my friend did awesome work. Your friend did awesome work, but then you start to get clients that have different, you know, blocks. And it's not as much about like just finding the right plan, but helping them get out of their own way. So I think it definitely started from a place of like, you know, nutrition and exercise science and, and has evolved for me at least. And I know for you too, based on our conversations to a lot more behavior change stuff too. Uh, it's yeah, it's definitely complicated, but I think that's kind of what originated for me. 100% man. And I, I definitely agree with you on how, uh, when we first started, it seems like a lot of it, our focus was like all X's and O's. It was like, do this, achieve this, do this, achieve this. But really as you get deeper into it, and especially like the first few clients, maybe the people that are super close to you and dedicated, they're like, okay, they do those things and it works, but they're just kind of willpowering their way through it. Where now you start to realize like oh, the uh, self-sabotage cycles, the, the behavior, the the mindset, the, the subconscious programmings that they have that they don't realize they're actually doing is really what creates that sustainable approach. And I think one of the conversations we had is just like how it's so unfortunate in today's world how it has its pros and cons, right? There's so much information available now, and it's so hard to kind of decipher between what's right, what's wrong, what should I actually listen to, what should I avoid, or who should I even listen to, right? And so, like, you have some guy on Instagram that's telling you, don't eat vegetables, and then you have some guy over here that's like, only eat vegetables, and then it's like, it's so hard to know what's right and what's wrong, especially as the average person. And so my question would be is like, as the average person, and I know you, I'm sure you've had a lot of conversations like this with clients of like, how does one, someone that's new, trying to figure this shit out, right? How does one figure out or find the right person to follow or find the right person that they can trust as a coach? It's a really good question. I think like, I think one of the biggest things to look out for is, are they say like, I don't know how to say this the right way. Are they delivering a message through very specific methods instead of more principle based? I, and that was pretty wordy of me to say it that way. Like if someone, I mean, for example, that, what was that TikTok trend that is like three to three thirty? You know what you're saying? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's like 30 minutes of walking at a three minute incline on the treadmill fasted every morning. That's the and, secret, right? You're right. Right. So like, I, and it's hard because it's like, you know, marketing, right? Like that's what sells because people want a specific method. But I think anybody that's, that's gung ho on a specific modality like keto or fasting or anything that's super hyper specific and, and calling it the way to go is, is a big clue in that maybe you should stay away. And I don't, you know, all those people, it's like, I don't doubt that that worked for you and it can work, but to like get, like you have blinders on when you're, when you're so focused on methods instead of the principles behind the methods. I don't know if that was helpful or not. I think that's a really good question, but I think just like, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. That, that was fantastic. So I think my takeaway on that is like, I think when you have a coach that says, this is the answer to your problem every time, that's probably the person that doesn't understand nuance of individuals and human behavior. It's like, I always think back to like, oh, this, when I went to Cal State Fullerton, do you know, you, you know, who Andy Galpin is? Yeah. So he wizard, that guy's brilliant. So I actually had him as a professor. And in our class, every time someone asked him a question, and every time there was a like a topic brought up, 
he always answered with, it depends. And what I loved about that is that, that it just played into the, the nuance of human behavior, psychology. It played into the differences between you and I, right? We're not the same human being. We have different backgrounds, different histories, different. So I think depends is a great way of saying what you were saying of like principles apply to everyone, but the actual action that you take, the actual methodology might look different and be plugged into your system differently, right? So I love the answer. It depends. That's like my favorite thing to tell clients when they ask me a question like, well, it depends. Like, did you use the restroom today? Or did you go on a walk today? Or oh, you got two hours of sleep? No, I absolutely you should not work out today. I know it's on your program, but don't work out. You had two hours of sleep. So I think it depends is, is like my favorite thing there. I think going into that, I know, like, like you mentioned, like the principles is really big for you and the principles of like what you teach to your clients. And so I'm curious to know, like, could you name, by the way, you had a couple posts like this of like breaking down like the 32 lessons or like the 16 lessons I learned as a coach. And uh, I think that those were amazing posts. By the way. I read every single one of them. I was like, this is awesome, dude. But I'm curious, like, what are some of the, maybe the principles that people that come into your ecosystem tend to be lacking the most and the ones that you find to be like the most helpful. I heard on a recent podcast, you're talking about like moving the big rock instead of like the little pebbles. So like, what are some of those bigger principles that you find impact, have the greatest impact on like, say your clients or some of the newer people that you work? With? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I'll, and I'll say real quick, just about that, that last question. Like one of my favorite quotes is if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So that it depends statement, which I love Andy's stuff. I That's freaking awesome that you had him as a professor. I remember like looking at Cal State Fullerton's programs back in the day to go to go learn from him. Anyways, like, you know, people get very bought in on a specific ideology or methodology. So when you come to them, they are, blunt, you know, like the way someone looks at a forest is going to be different between a biologist or a, you know, environmentalist or, or whatever. So if you have a very specific training, you're not going to see the big picture for a client. And so I love that. It depends question. Cause it's like, is a, you know, is diet Coke healthy? Like it depends. Actually, that's probably a bad, bad example because I'm actually, yeah. there's not much out there that convinces me it's not healthy. Uh, but like with a specific food, it depends. Like, are you moving from eating McDonald's three meals a day? Then having McDonald's once a day is healthy for you because you're moving in the right direction. You're moving away from three days, three times a day to one time a day. So, so I couldn't agree more, but those principles, I mean, like, it's funny because, you know, like there is literature on like, what are the things that determine long-term weight loss or weight maintenance success? And when you look at it, it's very like, it's kind of like, oh yeah, no shit. Right. Like, you know, it's like yep. higher levels of physical activity, more unprocessed foods, a higher level of cognitive oversight. Uh, you know, it's all stuff that's like, okay, like once again, it's, it's like, all right, well, the, the challenge is getting them to stick with that. Anyways, some of the principles are just, man, I think like one of the biggest things that I, and this is going to be really basic, right. But I'm a big fan of tracking calories and allowing the client to have that self-education instead of me telling them, eat this, not that, this is good, this is bad. And I mean, the name of your podcast, I love it, taught, not told, right? So like just that, that principle, I mean, it's, this is, this is an obvious one, but that principle of calories is going to be so, so important because so many clients come in and I think it's getting them away from that mindset of being told and wanting to have the black and white answers and, and true progress and changes in the, in the gray area. So like allowing them the tools to start learning that and, you know, of course, assisting along the way and, and guiding them through it, but to give someone calorie, a calorie target or to have them track their food and just see why it makes more sense to eat more vegetables and be like, I am so much more full and like, I don't blow through my calorie budget. So like big picture, some of the biggest things for me are that, that cognitive oversight in some shape or way about your, your food intake, eating more whole foods, like no brainers, right? Moving more, getting away from specific exercise modalities. Of course, strength training is a big piece in some way, shape or form as well. But then outside of that strength training, not having them super hyper focused on any specific, you know, I was so for me personally, like finding CrossFit back in the day, I was like, oh, there must be some 
thing about this high intensity work that just like builds muscle and torches fat. And it's like, in reality, you know, like exercise is either going to burn you calories to help you create a deficit or to help you uh, manage intake or, or energy balance, or it's going to build muscle. And, and that's kind of it, you know? Um, yeah, there's aerobic benefits, things like that, but I kind of rambled there, but those are some of the bigger picture things that we're always trying to work on with anybody that comes in for sure. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I think I agree that those are like some of the most like core staple principles that I feel like a lot of people overcomplicate. Like they cannot allow themselves to believe it is that simple when in reality it really is. And in my opinion, it's just like being able to do the stupid, simple shit for a long enough period of time to see the change happen. And uh, one of the thought bubbles I had pop in my head as you were talking is like, I agree, I'm the same way. Actually, I only have my clients really track calories and protein. I, I'm like, dude, let your fats and carbs fluctuate. As long as you're getting enough fat, it doesn't like your carbs and fats will make up the remainder of your calories. I don't care if you have a little extra carbs one day or a little less, it doesn't matter. Like, and also I give a calorie range. I'm like, go over a hundred, go under a hundred. As long as your weekly average is about right, there you go. Like have a little flexibility, have a little freedom. There. My thing is, is that I've been seeing this movement on like things like Twitter, um, on threads. I scroll through threads sometimes. I see some random comments. I don't know if it's an algorithm or what, but I'll see some people asking like, are, are people talking about like tracking food and tracking calories and how it's so bad and it's like you're, you're creating a bad relationship with food and i'm curious to know like how do you feel about this i don't know if it's a movement or if it's like something people are like demonizing tracking food i don't know if you even have a perspective on that but i'm just curious like do you think everyone has to track their food or needs to for some period of time or do you feel like it kind of the case like it depends kind of thing yeah yeah so definitely and it depends if you want to lose weight if you if you're at an unhealthy body weight and it's at the point where you need to lose weight, there are some people that it's like you're not necessarily at a bad body weight. You have poor body po composition and we need to change your body composition. And we can vary. That's a whole different story than someone that has consider a decent amount of weight to lose. So if if the story is that they aren't necessarily needing to to change their body weight much, I usually say like, Hey, let's focus on your habits around food. Let's focus on protein intake. Let's focus on eating more vegetables. And we can usually get great progress there without even touching it. I had a client last year who's super, super busy. I think she works in like the arena space, something with uh, sports arenas for, for pro sports. And so like in that season, it's, it's super busy. She didn't have much weight to lose. And we just focused on consistent meals, more vegetables, more protein, lifting weights, and her scale went up a little bit, but she was off like four inches from the waist or something like that in two months or three months. It was insane. And it's like, I'm always, I'm always thinking, what's the lowest hanging fruit here? Let's not jump to things that, that aren't necessary. That being said, if someone needs to lose weight or a pretty solid amount of weight, we need to have some oversight on your food in some shape or form. Honestly, most of us do. Some people are blessed in that they don't, but most people do in our environment of super high processed foods. They're everywhere. It's a pipe dream if anybody's telling you it's going to be set it and forget it once you get to your goal because high calorie foods are not going anywhere. We all need cognitive oversight in some way, shape, or form. For some of us, we can get away with more of that intuitive approach and, and people are very lucky to have that, but that's not that many people. For the people that are going to have to have a more direct approach, first and foremost, I think that like anybody out there who has not done it would benefit from it for at least a few weeks. Like it's so educational. Literally, if you did nothing else, awareness is the first step to change, right? Like we can't change what we're not aware of. So even if it's not accurate, like that's going to teach you so much. Like I said, debate all day in the comments about if whole foods or if a calorie is a calorie or whole foods are important, just go track your food eating McDonald's and then go track your food at the same calories eating chicken, vegetables, good whole foods. And you tell me how you feel and, and learn for yourself. So the thing to me and the reason why I tend to lean more towards tracking, I also do the same exact thing with calories and protein. Just get that minimum fat. It doesn't matter. And that's even a big one that you have to ingrain in people because they're like, do you think it's because I'm going too high in carbs? I'm like, me and, yeah. me and my assistant coaches joke because it's like 99% of questions we get about nutrition. The answer is, unless you want to step on a bodybuilding stage, no, it doesn't matter. Um, outside of like five things, you know, but, um, okay. So 
if you have considerable weight to lose, you you know the, the research on intuitive eating it, it's it's solid to help with weight maintenance. It's not the best for achieving significant weight loss. So we need some type of strategy that's going to yes lead to a calorie deficit. That is true. That's what we need. But the reason I lean more towards cal- tracking calories and protein is that education is that awareness at least in the shorter term. Because with the other methods like cutting out carbs with keto or like fasting, what do you do when you hit a plateau? Do you cut out more carbs? Because you've already cut them out. So what do you do then? And with calories, it's so direct and you can adjust it and tweak it. And with these other methods, it's much harder. And at the same time, you can really see on paper in front of you how it works to make things work in moderation. Because like, you know, people scream all day that it's like going to kill you, that you eat all these things, whatever. Realistically, like people are going to eat tasty food, you know, and to see that, I think it works in both directions because sometimes it's like, wow, that adds up quick. And other times it's like, like I ate pretty good all day and like I made this work and I don't feel guilty about it now. So I think like, you know, once again, black and white, social media, all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, tracking it's like tracking a budget like is there something inherently bad yeah of course if you have a history of disordered eating that's a whole different conversation but like you know tracking your calories that's amoral like our human brains like we just give meaning to everything and try to make a story out of it but it's like no it is what it is like it's just bringing awareness to the problem so once again i i ramble a lot but uh those are my thoughts Dude, that was that was beautiful and i think uh I think my favorite analogy around that is what you just mentioned at the end there, which is like tracking your budget. It's like, how do you know how much money you're saving or if you can even pay your damn bills if you're not aware of where the money's going, right? So yep. uh, that's how I feel about calories. And I 100%, I'm all, I couldn't agree more with that. And I, in a very, very rare case of someone with, like you said, past eating disorders or um, a very, very poor relationship with food. Sure. Maybe we start with just like, can we actually eat two meals a day? Let's just start there. Not actually tracking them, but just like actually eating them, you know? Um, but generally speaking, I would say 99% of my clients that I, especially when they get started with me, they start tracking their food and they're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that that food I've been having at work twice a week is 800 calories. And I can just make the same thing at home for 300 and feel way better after and not have to run to the bathroom. You know, it's like, Yes. So those little things are such, such big impacts on just like that overall journey and kind of going back to the journey itself. I'm curious if you have, or do you have some sort of like, in a sense, blueprint or journey or path that you take a lot of clients on? Like, for example, like I come in like the first week or a couple of weeks, it's like really focused on just building better habits. I feel like a lot of people just have these like little habits that they do on a weekly basis. They're not aware of. So it's like fixing those. Then it's like really focusing on ramping up the metabolism, which is really just like being consistent with workouts, bringing the calories up to like a normal maintenance if they've been dieting for, you know, six months, six years, even, you know, I have some moms that come to me that have been dieting for 10 years and they're eating 1200 calories and not losing weight. Well, there's a couple of reasons that could be, but let's just get you back up to normal for say fat loss and then like lifestyle integration. And that's what Tottenham not told stands for is actually is like, I tell my clients, they sign up, like, I actually don't want to work with you forever. I want to teach you everything so you can go off on your own. And I can say, peace out, love you, thank you. But ultimately, that was a long way of me asking, do you have some sort of structure, some sort of process that you take? The majority of your clients do. I'm sure you get a lot of like similar people, and I'm sure it modifies to every individual. But is there a system or process that you like to follow? Yeah, mine's very similar to yours. And, And I always tell people, I'm like, you know, they're not mutually exclusive. It's kind of like fluid, right? But generally, my kind of three three-step, you know, satisfy the the marketing coaches out there. Three-step process is like, I call it shift, shift your focus. So that is shifting from this body weight focus, calorie deficit, dropping calories, or yeah, dropping calories, increasing calories out through cardio that everyone's been drilled into, shifting it to a body composition focus. So very similar, like we could say maximize your metabolism, but really what is that? It's building muscle to increase your resting metabolic rate, burn more calories while you sleep, moving more throughout your day outside of the gym, because that's an overwhelming amount of the calories you burn unless you're running marathons. And then increasing your food quality, which is going to improve the the thermic effect of food, which actually can be a kind of decent impact on, on calories out. And and those are the, the the main things there. And like how I explain it to people is like, you know, I think 
I think there's a number out there that like the average Americans be or total daily energy energy expenditures like 2200 or something like that. But let's say it's 2000. The the modern or traditional way has always been like you need a calorie deficit, so you need to focus on eating less. And it's like, all right, well, um, and once again, we're always diagnosing the the like big rocks, like you mentioned. Well, if if Mary is walking 4,000 steps a day, doesn't resistance train, doesn't eat any protein, and doesn't eat any vegetables, we are literally racing to the bottom. So instead of having this mindset of like, all right, I burn 2,000 a day, I need to eat 1,500. Let's have the mindset of let's eat 2,000 and burn 2,500 because you're going to get more food. That's more flexibility in our environment. So a uh, very similar first first step there is, is shifting that focus to body composition instead of body weight. And then I call it simplify is step two. And that really is, um, you know, cutting out the noise, really focusing on perfect example. Let's focus on calories and protein, not fats and carbs and play Tetris every day in our in our phones. And then like really focus on, you know, streamlining, making it as easy as possible, setting up your environment for success. But I think what people miss with that is they think there's something out there that's going to unlock easy mode and make it easy forever. Yes, we can simplify. Yes, we can make it as easy as possible. Yes, we can modify your environment, but there will be challenges and that's okay. Discomfort is okay. So my like third step is always uh, sustain or sustain it for life. So that's where we come into, hey, how do we navigate when it will get hard? Let's expect it to get hard. That's okay. We want like a manageable hard, not like grind it out, like, you know, hate ourselves in the process, will power it out, but learn to deal with, with that discomfort along the way, learn some contingency plans or implementation intentions for vacations, holidays, all that good stuff, you know, and ideally we're incorporating that sustained piece throughout the process. I always tell my clients, it's like, I want you to have a vacation while we work together because that's your practice run for yeah. later on. Let's have those small doses instead of just like trying to get to a goal and be like, all right, I'm done tracking because if we use tracking as a tool, not a crutch, we can kind of pair it with the habits around food, all the things outside of that. So that like, eventually people get to that point where it's like, all right, I know intuitively if I have like one of these three, four, five breakfasts, one of these three, four, five lunches, and I eat like, you know, I, I watch my protein and prioritize veggies at dinner, I can maintain weight. And that's a really cool place to get to. So yeah, that's that's the the shift, simplify, sustain is, is, is what I've called. I love that. I, it's so funny, dude. Like I, I, all of these things, we have so much more in common than I thought. It's, it's great. But I do feel like that I always tend to relate to really great coaches that really emphasize the value they're providing to their clients they really like genuinely give a shit about giving their clients the best results possible and helping them make sustainable change and it's it's unfortunate to know that there's so many people that i, I don't know about you but i come across a lot on social media that are just are either in it for the wrong reasons or spreading misinformation or giving these people this cookie cutter you know one trick pony approach to here, here you go, here's results, but not really setting them up for success in the long term. And I do feel like one of the like fastest ways that people are one of the biggest mistakes people make on their journeys is like when they first start, they just go straight into fat loss. Like they make that mistake of like, I'm just going to cut this out, cut this out, and I'm going to just go run and run and run. And it's like this endless game of I'm just going to burn more calories cut more food, burn more calories, cut more food. And, and it really leads to this really damaging place to sustainability, but also like their their quality of life, their happiness. And I think that that's one thing that I really like to emphasize is like, you can actually enjoy this journey if you do it the right way. And I feel like this kind of brings me to my question of like, don't I genuinely don't think everyone's ready for fat loss, especially when they start, right? I feel like there is some prerequisites in a sense. And so is there anyone that comes to mind or any like demographic or not demographic, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A type of person or a person with X behaviors that you find is not ready for fat loss and a person that is ready. Or like my question is, is like, who is not ready for fat loss and who is someone like what things need to be in place before someone is ready for fat loss? Yeah. You, I mean, and like you said earlier, like it is really simple. I feel like, like if people follow my page, I say the same damn things over and over and over. Uh, I, I used to have a module in my program for clients that said, earn your diet. 
and it and what it was is you have no business trying to cut calories if you have not bare minimum established a steady weight training routine started eating more protein and increased your step count and this is kind of like just like right before because it you literally like and i know for us it's like and i struggle with this because like it is so clear to me from my perspective to see this and i and i forget how how it like blind people are to this but you aren't starting back over at square one if you lose weight and gain it back you are digging yourself into a deep hole because you're losing muscle without those habits online and i throw in with that also sleep because we also see sleep restriction impairs the ratio of fat and muscle you lose too you are not getting back to square one you're losing muscle on the way down and then gaining it back as fat when you gain it back up and like if we zoom out across your entire life, switching from this scale focus and this fat loss focus to a accumulate as much muscle as possible focus is so much better all around because of, like you just said, it it's more energy, it's more flexibility because you start burning more calories in your sleep. It is, you know, you look better. It's such a no brainer to me, but those are like the, the main things that I like do like, and the thing is, like, you know, I know we say, like, not ready for fat loss. You can still lose fat. Like, if you maintain your weight and you're new to resistance training, and I think people get confused when I say resist. If you're new to lifting weights and eating protein and doing and taking care of yourself, you can lose fat and gain muscle at the same time without ever trying to cut calories super low. So it's like, and I always tell people, you could do that for a year. And be so far, I, I think of it, I always say it's like kind of pulling a slingshot back when you're building muscle and putting the reps in with strength training and protein and the scale isn't moving. Because later on, you fast forward a year, your metabolic rate is higher. Your metabolic rate is also higher. Your total daily calorie burn is also higher because the habits that are that you're going to do along the way with those increase in steps and the weight training are just going to lead to better mood, better energy. So you're going to move more in your day anyways. Your habits are going to be different. And then you get to this place where it's like, okay, now later on we get, you know, like let's let's juice it for all we got while your weight's stable and like get as much muscle gain and fat loss as we can at the same weight, drop inches, still look better, feel better. Then yeah, down the line, if we want to let go of that slingshot and, and go into a dedicated weight loss phase, it's going to be so much better all around. So those are the main like habits, I would say. I'd say like demographic wise or, or mindset wise, what are you doing it for? Whose goals are they? Are they actually your goals? How do they align with your values? Because I promise you, if it's about looking good in a swimsuit for people other than yourself on a holiday, you're going to get there and it's going to fall apart because it's not going to do what you wanted it to do. And so if we can tie your goals to your values, you can live by your values today instead of getting to some place in the future where you think everything's going to be fixed. And uh, I actually said this in one of my client trainings. I said, you don't believe me? Go do it. And you're going to find out it doesn't. And then you're going to come back around. And I think, honestly, that was part of my journey. Like, personally, I had to do that. Maybe didn't have to, but that was it. And I realized that. But really, really ask yourself what you want, because I personally believe that Everyone is doing it some way, shape, or form to be more present in their relationships, in their everyday life, in whatever they do. And so if we're rushing to fat loss and hating the process, you're literally just beating beating the shit out of yourself. I don't know if you're cool with cussing on the fat loss, but you're, you're just beating yourself up to do something that you're hoping is going to get you more peace of mind in your day anyways, in some way, shape, or form. So, you know, and then that, that brings me always to like the spiritual side and, and all that good stuff. But yeah, those are the things like really, really consider like whose goals are they and why are you doing them? Because if you, if you drill down from that surface level stuff and consider that it's like, I want to be a good role model for my children, you can, you can live as that today instead of rushing to some outcome. And, and like you said, it can be so energizing and so much better and enjoyable if you if you do it a different way literal home run <laughs> the man just hit a home run with that one that was beautiful i couldn't agree more man and i think uh, i love how you went from like the the actionability the 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 baseline of like the actual behavior i mean the, the habits and that it really came down to 
again, that deeper stuff that a lot of people don't really consider. And I think that is absolutely essential. And I think one of my favorite things to do with clients is, or like potential clients is like on phone calls is not just like, oh, what are your goals? Okay, but like, why? Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, oh, like, oh, I just like, you know, we want to feel better. Okay, why? Like, I want to look better so I can, okay. Now we have, I ask why, like sometimes three to five times on the same question. So I can really get deeper and really understand that like, okay, what's the root cause of this? Like for myself, very relatable. When I go to, got to college, I wanted to get in great shape. It was like, yeah, so maybe I can attract some more females. Maybe I can get more attention. But really that was only feeding my ego. Little did I know that this was going to lead me to some, some orthorexic like spiral of like me, like optimal chasing. And then from there backing off and realize like, oh damn, like I, that was not even me. Like, what was I doing there? And now I've been able to create more balance and being able to like, I just want to feel my best. Like I literally told the client today, I said, I literally want to be the person that can use the restroom on his own until the day he dies. I don't want to have to have help. That's what drives me. I want to be an amazing example for my children. I want to look and feel my absolute best so I can have the energy and be able to do these things on a daily basis for the rest of my life. And so I uh, 100% agree with you on that. And speaking of home runs, you had a quote and uh, you had a tweet or a thread the other day that I was like, dude, this is like one liner that really hit home for me. And like, I definitely feel like a lot of people get some value from it. And it was, if your diet has an end date, your results will too. And I would love to kind of hear kind of what sparked that for you, but also like maybe some elaboration on it. Because I, th I think that is like one of the most important things for people to understand is that this is not a destination. This is all about the journey itself. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. So I think I was writing a longer thread and it was like the fourth tweet or the fourth slide down and I was making a point and it just came out and I was like, oh, I'm throwing that out by itself. I really like that. It's so weird because like if you go into like creation mode for those like heavy hitters, like the short ones, you can't force that. It always comes, you know, and then you're like, wow, like I've always known that, but I've never been able to put that into words. So first and foremost, I want to highlight the and I, I might butcher this a little bit, but I think I can get the, po the point across. The word diet originates as I believe it comes like the Greek very origin. I'm not super good about speaking correctly about this, but I think it or originates as a way of life. Literally the word diet originates as way of life or way of eating. Maybe. Um, I, I don't know, just cause I threw diet in there. Like a lot of people, you know, diet culture or, or like, cause people associate diet with eating 1200 calories. And it's like, first and foremost, your diet, everyone has a diet. Everyone has a diet. Like you have a diet. Uh, and so I mean, at the most basic level, I think 90% of people are in this mode where they are so focused on a specific plan that gets them, like I said earlier, to this set it and forget it land where everything is perfect. And that is just couldn't be farther from the truth. It's, it's not a thing. So if you're planning on doing it and then something else, you're already setting yourself up to fail. Now, one thing I will say, a little bit of nuance, it depends, right, is let's say you're tracking your calories to lose weight. The, the thing I want to highlight there is like, yeah, the, the amount of restriction it takes to get to your goal is not necessarily the same. Like after we get to your goal, we want to eat as many calories as possible while maintaining that goal. But we want to be eating the same types of foods after. So it's like the amount you're eating might change while your goals change. But what makes up that amount? should be the thing you're focused on without an end date. So making the change. I really feel like so many people's frustrations and, and like self-sabotage and like these cycles of just beating themselves up could be solved by just taking the pressure off. Like instead of doing it for that wedding that you're going to see high school friends at or whatever it is, what's best for you five years from now instead of five weeks from now? Because that will just change your entire perspective. But yeah, that's that's kind of the backstory of that one. Hundred percent, man, and uh, couldn't agree more. I think I think the, my my favorite thing to clients to, to tell them is just zoom out, just freaking yeah. zoom out. Like, why are you so you're so narrowly focused on this thing? Or like, okay, are you only going to be here for the next three months, like on the planet, or like is that is that it? And all you know, it's like no, you, you're going to be here for another 30, 40, 50, 60 years. You know, it's like. Uh, why, why put a restriction on it? Like I, I get it. You want to look amazing for your wedding, but like, 
why don't we plan to like look amazing like the six months after and the three years after while you're a mom and then that you know what i mean so i think uh i couldn't agree more with just like being able to zoom out and look at the bigger picture of like okay what do i want years from now um my favorite quote from from that is like if you can't do it for a decade don't do it for a day and i think yeah. that one that one really is like one of my favorite quotes i when my friend jared actually said that to me once and i was like that one, that was a, that's deep but man, uh, I do want to say this has been freaking amazing, dude. Uh, I think so many people will get a ton of value from this. And one of the traditions I have that I, I started recently on my podcast, especially when I interview coaches, really in minds like yourself, I like to ask one question that is like the, the TNT question. And it's, if you could only teach your clients one skill or habit that would have the single greatest impact on health and or quality of life, what would it be? Yeah. My mind's going like so many different categories. It's a tough one. I want, yeah, and I want to like give four, but uh, I think I think I I have to just go with with basic strength training. I have to because that is like if if there's only one thing you could do when it comes to the X's and O's, right? When it comes to the X's and O's of nutrition or exercise, I would say literally just getting two days a week of strength training in, whether you're getting on machines or lifting kettlebells at home, or using resistance bands, or dumbbells, or barbells, I don't care. Literally just getting consistent with that long-term will get you that muscle and, and get you so much wiggle room with everything else. So when it, yeah, when it comes to X's and O's, that's that's always my, my number one, I think. I, I would 100% agree. And I also think it's like working out in itself is such a fantastic foundation like it's one of the least barrier to entry and you can modify exercise, lifting weights to anyone. Like I literally have 80 year old clients that I work with that can actually go to the gym and pick up a five pound dumbbell and do some exercises and also people extremely young, you know, so it's modifiable. And I, I really think it's a foundation for everything else. Like once you get that habit and routine in place, then it's like, oh, then you're kind of like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like what's next? So I love that answer, man. So lastly, I want to know where can people find you and do you have anything cool coming up? I know, uh, actually I will say, I do know I'm aware that recently you kind of changed up a little your demographic, right? I know we both had a very similar career driven individuals, busy professionals for say, uh, it's kind of broad, but also probably the people that need the help the most, but I know you kind of changed that recently. So I would love to hear a little bit about that, kind of what you have to offer for those people. And then also let us know where we can find you, where people can connect with you moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram. Uh, if you search Brooks Coleman or, or the Brooks Coleman, everything is linked from there. Yeah. Shifts recently. So, uh, used to be similar. Um, and then naturally kind of like the algorithm did its thing and, and we started working with primarily women, but really what's been most rewarding for us is this mindset shift away from the scale obsession and the calorie, the super low calories and this endless cycle that, that we really just talked about. Um, so we've, we've shifted to really embracing that, that ditch the scale, ditch the, the chronic dieting, ditch the restriction and embrace more instead of less. So really focusing on people that want to change their body shape uh, and and then have that body weight be a secondary thing to that so that we can contribute to your your quality of life, your energy, your vitality, your your day-to-day -day life enjoyment. So with that, I actually am opening up like all previous client trainings and in a new course inside the platform called School. So the group is called Stop Dieting, Start Living, which I, I, I'm really excited about the name, um, but really women that want to just strength training, start eating more protein, start doing these things for life instead of a short-term thing. You know, men men are welcome as well. You know, it's it's principles over methods. So it'll still apply if, if you're interested. Amazing, man. I'm, I'm super excited. And if you're listening to this, can you do me a huge favor? Can you go follow Brooks Coleman on Instagram? Send him a message, told him that you found him on the podcast. Just say thank you because I know you already got a ton of value from this. But aside from that, man, thank you again so much. This has been an absolute pleasure. And I just want to say I'm excited to connect with you more in the future. And uh, I believe... In San Diego in a few weeks. Uh, are you going to Caleb's event? I won't be able to make it. No. Oh, I was going to say, I actually might be going. But uh, all right, man. Well, thank you again. And uh, any last words? Um, 
I I'll say I'll say what the motto in in the group is is F the scale. So F the scale. If you're out there, you're scale obsessed. Embrace muscle, embrace body shape over body weight. That's what I'd leave you with. Love it. All right, man. Thank you again. I appreciate your time and uh, catch you guys on the next one. Peace.